So, this is Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3.0.6. Dicks. All right, so Final Fantasy Tactics is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, however, I've played and beaten the game so many times that it's kind of like a cakewalk now. So, I found this mod for the game called Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3 and I have it on my game now. <clears throat> now, the only thing is is the version of it I got is slightly different than the main version of the mod, and that's why it says content, because it means that it has all the revisions, all the reworks, all that stuff from the original tactics to make the game harder on the player. Like, they took out the Golem Summoner spell, which was broke as fuck. They reworked the Calculator class to be more of like a super powerful mage class and everything to take that broke-ass shit out. They added in a few battles, added in a few classes, reworked like levels, all that shit, you know, and so forth. But in the original version of Tactics 1.3, the storyline battles, the people in them actually went up and level with you, which made this really difficult because they could get access to armor and stuff like that that you didn't even have at that point in the game. So the version that I've got right here doesn't have the storyline characters grow up and level, but everything else is the same. So it's still harder. And oh my god, the Lion War! Fuck! <clears throat> it's the truth, only what we can see. Now, I, I love this game, but I'm going to tell you right now, this storyline is the most exaggerated out there shit I've ever seen. It's like the most over-dramatized shit I've ever seen. And the music on it is, is amazing, the gameplay is amazing, but the storyline on this is like as over-dramatized as you can possibly fathom. I mean, it really is. And if you want more of an example of this, you know, fucking look at this shit. It's like a goddamn movie credit screen. They even put in a PlayStation rating. It's like, the game is super, super over-dramatic. There's no denying this. However, it's still a fucking amazing game. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. Love orange juice and all that, but man, it kills my throat. Anyways. Why did I pick continue? I don't even have a fucking save for this. I'm out of my mind. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get on with this here. And I'll, as I go along, I'll list off the changes that I recognize. Now, the first thing about this game is this has all already happened. So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like Metal Gear Solid 2, like at the beginning of the game, where it's like you can't have like a uh, paradox because you died, even though the story's already happened. So if you die, it's a paradox because obviously in the real story he didn't die. You get what I'm saying? So this is all stuff that's already happened in the storyline. <clears throat> now the basic storyline is, as far as I can grasp, is that there's these two warring parties and they fight each other, and they're trying to take control of land. There's a lot of deceit and backstabbing and all this shit. The problem is that in the original English version of this game, which this still has the original script of, but it was fixed in the PSP remake, is that the script was translated really bad. Like, we're talking basically, like, you know when you try and read Shakespearean, and a lot of the language structure in it and the words used aren't something you're normally accustomed to seeing? That's, like, what this whole game is like when it comes to the dialogue. So, yeah, it's it's pretty bad on that. No, it's not fucking okay. My name is O. <clears throat> no, I want to fucking go back. Okay. So, um, the storyline is barely comprehensible, in my opinion. I've seen people say in the comments that it's understandable. Um, you guys either have English majors or you, uh, I don't know what, because I used to major in English, and I consider myself to be pretty fucking verbose, even though I don't really show up my videos. Why am I continuing to fuck this up? That really works well for my argument, huh? Um, and I, I can get most of the storyline, but there's still some parts that just make no goddamn sense. So um, I'm going to put my actual birthday on here so you guys can flip a dip. <laughs> I am a Libra. I'm a Labra. <clears throat> so here we are. In the lands of Ivalis, and yes, this is the same lands of Ivalis or Ivalis or whatever they're in, uh, I believe Final Fantasy 13, or is it 12? I don't know which, it's one of those two, but this is the same, um, world that that takes place in, is this. Except this is like 600 years in the past, or some shit, I don't even fucking know. Anyways, <clears throat> amazing PlayStation graphics. And I have to cough really loud, so feel free to mute this for about the next two seconds if you'd like. <laughs> Alright. A L F A N T A S Y T A C T I C S. Did I even say that right? I think I fucked up the last word. Making a real good argument for that verbosity statement earlier. 
Now, most kids who probably picked this up when it came out picked this up thinking it was going to be another Final Fantasy VII and were sorely disappointed and got butthurt. I wasn't one of those kids. I picked this up knowing full well what it was, even though I'd never played a tactics type game before, and I fucking loved it. Now, granted, I played Shining Force back when I was a kid, but I sucked at that game and I didn't really remember it when I picked this up. <clears throat> but, uh, I really, I loved this as a kid. This was fucking great. For the way my brain works about, like, Rube Goldberg schemes and all that stuff, like, uh, planning out shit, like, way in advance and everything, like, the whole chess mentality and all that stuff, I fucking love this shit. I mean, this is, this is, like, crack to me, this kind of game. Like, trying to think up all the strategies and all the possible ways that, like, your enemies could move and all the possible, like, ways the battle could go out. Like, I fucking love that stuff. I'm garbage at chess, but I love the theory behind chess and a lot of other games like that. Um, what was I going to say, though? Uh, and there's the picture of the game cover right there. <clears throat> but yeah, I love that shit. It's why I love Death Note, by the way. That's why Death Note's one of my favorite series of all time, um, is because of that. It's because of the mystery, and more than that, the whole planning out shit way in advance. I fucking love that. That shit is just crack cocaine right there to me um intro should be almost done i'm just letting it show so you at least have some idea of like what the hell is happening here <clears throat> this game also has a real problem with uh time travel and i don't mean time travel in the literal sense i mean time travel like like the game starts off in chapter two of the timeline then it kicks you back to chapter one then you go all the way through, and then you replay this segment over, and then a few years jump by or something like that. So it's kind of all over the place with, like, the time thing. So now we get into the actual graphics of the game. At the Orbone Monastery. All right. You fucking know. We're, we're at the Orbone Monastery. And now this is the point where probably half of you are like, Oh my god, these graphics! Turn this fucking shit off! Jesus! It's so bad! And that is a woman. I honestly thought that was a man for the first, uh, you know, hour I played this game. So just, just pointing that out. <clears throat> also get used to everybody having like the same four postures. Because everybody does in this game. With very rare exceptions. It's been nearly an hour. Don't be rude to the princess, Gap Gary. Oh yeah, everybody in this name, by the way, has complete fucking insane names that like you're never going to hear in reality. Or at least not in English, normally. At least not in common day English. But that's probably because it's like, you know, a billion years ago. There are rude knaves, even among the Hokuten. Oh, I have to do it in a female voice. So there are rude knaves, even among the Hokuten. I'm being more than kind to the god captains here. <laughs> what is captains? Besides, the mercenary is hired by the Hokuten. I'm not obliged to show respect to you. What? How dare you? I could try and do this all in voices, but I don't know how to be able to do it. So if you want me to do that, let me know in, for the future parts. Because I'm only going to record some of this for right now. <clears throat> by some of it, I mean probably like two hours. Go with God. You too, Simon. I like how my female voice sounds like the dude from uh, Family Guy. Lady Agras, the enemy. I can't do female voices. Fuck this shit. What one must do to make money? Well, that's right. You have a problem too. I'm no longer a knight, just a mercenary like you. That's right. Well then, let's go. Oh, oh. cheerio. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Fuck. Let me reiterate. I fucking love this game. This is one of the best games ever made, like, ever. But that still doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't mean I'm not going to make fun of it. Nothing is sacred on this channel. The Crest of the Black Lion. What's wrong with Prince Gotana? He's such an idiot. Does he want to start a war? And uh, this, is the, this is the first of many storyline sequences where you will have no fucking idea what they're talking about whatsoever. At all. Because who the fuck is Gotana? Why does he want to start a war? Who is that chick in the fucking place, in the church? Who is the old man? Who are you? Who is Gafgarian? Who are the people working for you? Why does everybody look the same? Are there clones? Etc. Like, okay, so she's a princess. It's like, you basically 
if you don't really pay much attention to the storyline, except for the very base things that are going on, like he or she died, and he or she is a bad guy, and this is the overlying plot, if you just pay attention only to that and ignore the details, you'll be pretty fine in this. And this is coming from me, somebody who's a huge stickler over details and nitpicking and storylines and wanting to have stuff super overly detailed and complex. So if you know if it's coming from me, I'm not bullshitting on this. Fool! Only idiots attack head on, I guess switch his voice for no reason. Ha ha ha. Leave this to us. I can't fucking do this guy. Kind of we can't make money that way. Rod, I was alright, follow me. Ha ha. And his name's Rod, because he's Rod. Now there's actually a challenge on YouTube about trying to lose this battle because it's like almost fucking impossible. You essentially have to kill everybody on your team first and then slowly have the team, the enemy team, kill you. It's like almost impossible. People have done it, but you have to be a pro at it. That's impossible! You fucking dick! So now here's how the battle plays out. Is first of all, get this fucking view backwards, because you want to do that like almost immediately. Is, uh, come on. Now you may have noticed there, if you had really quick eyes, that it said, um, oil. You may have also noticed that, uh, that was not a normal archer attack. Remember this is 1.3. Many of the attacks of enemies have been reworked entirely. Many of the classes have been reworked entirely. Archers have been reworked into a completely different class. Um, many classes have had abilities added or removed, and status effects have been renamed as well. So I'll be learning with you all watching this as I go through it, because a lot of this I didn't actually really pay attention to when I was reading the whole manual of all the shit that's in there.